Hi you guys, welcome back to Beauty by Sam's where God's beauty and Sam's beauty are one of the same. In this video, you will see me create a yellow and black sun kissed summer makeup look. So if you like to see how I got this look, well sit back, relax, grab a drink and let's get into the video. transmission problems. Now, a Detroit Free Press investigation has uncovered internal documents suggesting Ford knew from the beginning the cars had defective transmissions. But emerging from the Great Recession and desperate to sell cars, Ford rolled them out anyway, even as company employees warned the cars were not roadworthy. And despite the warnings, they went ahead and, in fact, fast-tracked development. So there were red flags. Caution, slow down, but they were meeting deadlines. Customers complained the transmission would randomly lose power on freeways or suddenly engage and jump into an intersection. Ryan Karcheski says he's replaced two clutches in just five years. I would not feel confident selling this car to somebody else and having them drive it. I don't know if I could sleep at night if that happened. The paper found no deaths, but 50 reports of related injuries. Yet despite nearly 4,400 customer complaints, the government still hasn't launched an investigation or ordered a recall. In April, Ford warned shareholders it could cost billions to fix the cars and potentially more in class action lawsuits. In a statement, the company acknowledges transmission problems, but says, while we have addressed quality problems with the transmission, vehicles in which it was installed were and remain safe. Ford says fixing the problem has taken more time and is more complex than expected. Meanwhile, one and a half million Fiesta and Focus models remain on the road. Lester? Tom Costello, thanks. Coming up, the price you pay, a lawsuit battle over alleged deceptive hotel pricing. What that could mean for you. We're back now with the price you pay. Our Miguel Almaguer has details tonight on a new lawsuit claiming Marriott earned millions by deceiving hotel customers with hidden fees. A lot of Americans say it's happened to them. The hotel bill isn't what they expected when they booked online. With extra resort or urban destination fees added in, it may be disclosed in the fine print, but D.C.'s Attorney General calls it deceptive and is now suing Marriott over so-called drip pricing. The thing called a resort fee is lumped in with taxes and other fees. We think that consumers want transparency. They want to know what the real price is. The fees range from $9 to $95 a night and often don't cover extra amenities. D.C. suit comes amid an investigation launched by all 50 state AGs with customers venting on Twitter. When I arrived, it was an extra $40 a night. I was charged those fees this past weekend at Fort Lauderdale Weston Beach Resort, part of Marriott. And particularly hilarious when the resort fees are at hotels that are clearly not resorts. D.C. accuses Marriott of failing to disclose the fees for more than a decade. Marriott declined to comment, but did say, we look forward to continuing our discussions with other state AGs. Now D.C. wants Marriott to compensate affected customers and fully disclose all fees up front before customers book. Other states could take action against Marriott and hotel chains with similar practices. Lester. All right, Miguel, thanks. A terrifying scene here in New York this afternoon as a cab driver lost control, jumped the curb, and crashed into a restaurant at lunchtime. Officials said eight people were injured. Up next for us, an elusive alligator captivating the Windy City. Finally tonight, an unlikely tenant has taken up residence in a Chicago lagoon, much to the delight of locals. Kevin Tibbles has more on alligator mania. 
Check that. Chicago caught in the jaws of alligator love. He's a celebrity. The rock star reptile spotted this week in a local lagoon draws a curious crowd. Now has its own Twitter handle, tees, totes, and more. So what is this? Golden Park Lagoon Alligator Sausage. <laughs> it's even singing Chicago song. The city's asked Alligator Bob to rescue the five foot long visitor. Something that they're not used to dealing with. Why? Then how many alligators do you see in your backyard? Bob assures me the gator used to be someone's pet and needs to be caught before winter. Even a contest to choose a name was held. Finalists, Frank Lloyd Bite, Croc Obama, Ruth Gator Ginsburg, and the winner, Chance the Snapper. Meanwhile, the paparazzi prowls the pond. And you're not going to dinner, are you? No, I'm not. I'm not. You gotta be great. Kevin Tibbles, NBC News, Chicago. Croc Obama will be looking real good around November. That's mm. nightly news tonight. Thanks for watching. I'm Lester Holt for uh. NBC News. Good night. Hey, NBC News viewers. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe mm. by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching. Hmm. <laughs> Tonight, state of emergency, preparing for a potential disaster in the Gulf, with tropical storm barely expected to make landfall in the morning, possibly as a hurricane. The biggest risk, the potential for catastrophic flooding, as much as two feet of rain, and a life-threatening storm surge that could hit New Orleans hard. They gave us the words to wait on it, we said that's what we're going to do. Tonight, preparing for the worst as the biggest storm of the season takes aim. President Trump's labor secretary is out, Alex Acosta resigns over his role as a federal prosecutor in a sex trafficking case against Jeffrey Epstein. And late details, prosecutors now say Epstein tried to pay off two potential co-conspirators. R. Kelly arrested again, <laughs> this time on federal charges of sexual misconduct involving underage girls and allegations he paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy the silence of one of the alleged victims and her family. Protests and outrage tonight over the plan raised this weekend on undocumented immigrants who have been ordered out of the country as President Trump defends the crackdown. And how a traffic stop by a sheriff's deputy. There we go. Come on, honey. Come on. There you go. Turned into a heroic life-saving mission for a baby. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening on this busy news day. Tropical storm Barry is already being felt tonight along the Louisiana coast. Now less than 24 hours from landfall of a likely hurricane. Tremendous rains and a storm surge expected to produce life-threatening floods. In New Orleans today, crews hoping to hold off the rising waters close the floodgates at Lake Pontchartrain. Many residents heeding evacuation orders, taking what they can, while a run on provisions has left some store shelves practically bare. Our Kerry Sanders is in the storm zone tonight. Tonight, Tropical Storm Barry is bearing down on southern Louisiana. Portions of Grand Isle underwater as time has run out to repair. Nobody should take this storm lightly just because it's supposed to be a Category 1 when it makes landfall. Tens of thousands of tourists and convention goers in New Orleans packing up and getting out. They gave us the words to wait on a week, so that's what we're going to do. We need in advance of the storm to make sure that we get back to our families safely. 3,000 members of the Louisiana National Guard are on alert, bringing boats and high water vehicles. The biggest worry, not wind, but water, which is already rising. While storm surge can batter a coastline, this is what storm surge looks like. It's a fast-moving, fast-rising flash flood with the power of the Atlantic Ocean behind it. In the Crescent City, named because the Mississippi River makes that hard turn, there's another danger. That up to 70 mile per hour winds could cause a five foot storm surge, pushing so much water up the river, it spills over the top of New Orleans levees. Compounding the situation, the Mississippi is eight feet above its usual level. See those submerged trees over there? That's where the riverbank should be. With the slow moving storm now arriving, residents unsure what's next. I've never seen it this high. It's uh, pretty impressive. 
Tonight in low-lying areas outside of New Orleans, there are expectations of widespread flooding. Meantime, in the city, there is now a shelter-in-place order. That means that residents should hunker down and stay off streets. Lester, at this point, it's now all about riding it out. Yeah, we can see some of those waves over topping behind you. Carrie, thank you. Let's get a read on where this storm is. Let's bring in Al Roker. Al, what are we looking at? Lester, right now, Barry's making its way toward the Louisiana coast, currently about 70 miles south-southeast of Morgan City, Louisiana. It's got winds of 65 miles per hour. It's moving west-northwest at six miles per hour. Landfall sometime early Saturday morning and then makes its way up into the Mississippi River Valley. We are worried about two things. First of all, storm surge, anywhere from two to six feet, and that will cause a lot of flooding. And then add on top of that, tons of rain. We are talking about a high risk of flooding through the lower Mississippi River Valley. Rainfall amounts could top out at over 25 inches of rain, but generally 10 to 15 inches of rain. Either way, Lester, it will be really devastating flooding with this. All right, Al, thanks. Now, our other big story breaking today, the resignation of President Trump's Labor Secretary. Alex Acosta faced harsh criticism this week for his role in that plea deal in Florida in a sex abuse case against Jeffrey Epstein 11 years ago. Our Peter Alexander has that story. President Trump and Alex Acosta today walking out of the White House together before that surprise announcement. Acosta was resigning. I just want to let you know, this was him, not me, because I'm with him. He was a, he's a tremendous talent. Acosta's sudden departure comes less than 48 hours after the labor secretary defended his role as a U.S. attorney in that controversial plea agreement with financier Jeffrey Epstein more than a decade ago, where Epstein spent 13 months behind bars for soliciting prostitution from a minor. The goal here was straightforward, but Epstein behind bars. Acosta today. I do not think it is right and fair for this administration's labor department to have Epstein as the focus rather than the incredible economy that we have today. President Trump also revealing new details about his falling out with Epstein, who he says he has not spoken to in 15 years. Yes, and I did have a falling out a long time ago. I was not a fan of Jeffrey Epstein, and you watch people yesterday say, that I threw him out of a club. I didn't want anything to do with him. That was many, many years ago. It shows you one thing, that I have good taste. Peter joins me now. The president has already picked Acosta's successor. Yeah, that's right. The deputy labor secretary will now take over Lester on an acting basis. It is another cabinet post with an acting secretary, a list that includes critical departments like defense and homeland security, Lester. Peter, thank you. Let's get to those late new details now the Epstein case. Federal prosecutors now accusing him of witness tampering. Our Ann Thompson joins us. Ann, what can you tell us about that? Lester, these are very serious accusations, and they come from a filing this evening by federal prosecutors. And in it, prosecutors are accusing Jeffrey Epstein of trying to influence potential witnesses. Prosecutors claim that two days after the Miami Herald started publishing its stories that led to Epstein's latest criminal charges, he wired $100,000 to an account controlled by a possible co-conspirator and a quarter million dollars to another potential co-conspirator. Epstein is due back in federal court on Monday for a bail hearing. He is currently in custody and he has pled not guilty to charges of sex trafficking and conspiracy. All right, Lester. and with that uh, late news, thank you. R. Kelly is back behind bars facing new federal charges of child pornography and obstruction of justice. The embattled singer was arrested last night in Chicago on more than a dozen felony counts. NBC's Miguel Almaguer is in Chicago where 52-year-old Kelly appeared in court today. Unlike his last arrest, this time R. Kelly was detained by federal agents. Today, after appearing in a Chicago courtroom, he remains in custody. A new 13-count indictment accuses the R&B star of engaging in sex acts with five minors and recording the abuse. A second federal indictment involves five additional victims. We're talking about forced labor, child exploitation, the production of child pornography. With two of his associates also charged, Kelly is accused of using his entourage and star power to recruit girls to engage in illegal sexual activity. I believe I can fly. <laughs> At 
At the height mm. of his career, mm, 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 prosecutors mm. say Kelly would not allow his victims to leave their rooms to eat or visit the bathroom without receiving his permission. Mm. Investigators credit the docu-series Surviving R. Kelly with helping build their case. It really put a spotlight on the magnitude of his acts. Prosecutors also allege Kelly paid off a minor and her father at the center of his 2008 child pornography trial in which he was acquitted. Kelly denies all charges. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me. I'm fighting for my life. We believe he's innocent. We're going to fight to prove he's innocent. But tonight, Kelly remains in custody and behind bars. Hmm. Not far from this courthouse in Chicago, Kelly was arrested overnight while walking his dog. He did not enter a plea today. He's expected back in court next week. Lester. Miguel Almaguer in Chicago, thank you. Protests around the country today ahead of this weekend's planned crackdown on thousands of undocumented immigrants who have been ordered out of the U.S. And the president defended the raids today. Let's get more from NBC's Steve Patterson. <laughs> Tonight, cries of resistance on the eve of highly publicized ICE raids targeting 2,000 undocumented immigrants in 10 major cities. The operation is only aimed at immigrants who are under court orders to leave the country. People come into our country illegally, we're taking them out legally. Very simple. It's not something I like doing, but people have come into our country illegally. We're focused on criminals. But many fear that the raids will include other family members at the scene. To my family, this means fear. It stops us from wanting to go to work. It stops us from wanting to um, contribute to society. Widespread deportation efforts are unique to the Trump administration. According to ICE, more than 400,000 people were deported in 2012 under the Obama administration, significantly more than the 256,000 people under President Trump's White House last year. The difference analysts say President Trump has politicized it. It creates a lot of fear in the immigrant communities. Uh, I don't think that fear is helpful from ICE's public safety mission. Prominent Democrats warning immigrants of their rights. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez tweeting, no one can enter your home without a judicial warrant. A preemptive fight on the eve of a weekend stirring so much fear. Steve Patterson, NBC News. The House voted today to reauthorize funding for victims of the 9-11 attacks after powerful testimony from first responders. NYPD Detective Luis Alvarez, who battled cancer and blamed on his work at Ground Zero, pleaded with Congress during emotional testimony in June. He died shortly after. If passed by the Senate, funding would extend until the year 2090. Breaking news tonight in Indiana, where firefighters battled multiple house fires in a neighborhood of West Lafayette. Officials say five houses were destroyed and four others were damaged. The cause not clear at this moment. One firefighter suffered heat exhaustion. Now that incredible video, a member of the U.S. Coast Guard riding a drug smuggler submarine in the Pacific Ocean. The narco submariner finally surrendered, but most of the subs actually get through the U.S. dragnet. Here's NBC's Tom Costello. High drama on the high seas. The Coast Guard ship Monroe intercepting a fully loaded drug smuggler's sub off South America, screaming at the smugglers to stop their boat. Then a brazen display of courage, riding the sub, pounding on the hatch. Finally, five men surrender. It happened in June. The video just now released. In all, three Coast Guard ships intercepted 14 narco vessels confiscating 18 tons of cocaine and marijuana. Street value, half a billion dollars. They acquitted themselves with great distinction and courage on the open seas. Built in the jungle, the mini subs skim just below the surface. Only 11% are ever caught in a never ending game of cat and mouse with the Coast Guard. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. Tonight, a rare look inside China, how that country is using cutting-edge artificial intelligence not only to try to boost its economy, but also to keep an eye on its own people. Chief Foreign Correspondent Richard Engel shows us how. Tonight, China is sparing no expense to dominate the world of artificial intelligence. Though much of the technology was developed in the United States, President Xi Jinping wants China to be the world's AI leader by 2030. Officials showed us this sprawling port where, thanks to AI, human workers 
are being replaced. These automatic cranes are dropping off containers onto yeah. driverless cars. Yes, those little blue trucks. Yeah, so this truck, what is a little driver coming? Just the paddleboard. And while Americans encounter AI every day, with companies like Amazon and Netflix using it to rank products based on what we bought and watched, China is now using AI to rank its people. There are an estimated 200 million surveillance cameras in China, and now they not only know where you are, they know who you are. Many of the surveillance cameras feed into an AI system, which can not only recognize your face, but bring up your name, your social media activity, financial status, and criminal record. The AI calculates what's called a social credit score. If your score drops too low, you're denied access to airports and trains. The Chinese government is using artificial intelligence, and in particular the rapid and substantial and impressive advances they've made in facial recognition as a way to monitor people. Chinese authorities are using AI-powered facial recognition to help pick out an ethnic group of Muslims known as Uyghurs, and have sent upwards of a million Uyghurs to controversial re-education camps. This week, 22 nations urged China to stop what they call arbitrary detentions. China says it's part of a war on terror. They've used AI to create come, more come police in. state yeah, funding. Fine. China is investing in a technology it believes will drive the global economy for decades to come, and which allows the Communist Party to monitor its population on a scale never before seen in human history. And Richard, you know, the focus here, of course, has been on the trade war with China, but I understand they're taking a broader, deeper view. Yeah, of course, the trade war is important, has economic implications, but it's short term. In China, time and time again, we were told that there is a national mission now to overtake the United States, and the AI piece is just, just part of it. Richard Engel, Richard, thanks, and we want to let folks you can watch more of Richard's reporting on assignment made in China airs this Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern on MSNBC. Still ahead here for us tonight, suspects questioned another new lead to the shocking death of an American scientist on a Greek island. Also, how a traffic stop where speeding ended up saving the life of this baby, all caught on camera. You won't want to miss it. We're learning new details tonight in the case of an American scientist who was murdered in Greece. Police now saying they're searching for a knife they believe was used in the attack. NBC's Keir Simmons has the latest. Tonight, police say three suspects are facing questions over the murder of world-renowned American scientist Suzanne Eaton. Her body will be returned to Germany, where she lived, reports say, leaving behind an investigation that has shocked the Greek island of Crete. Police sources tell NBC News they are now looking for a knife believed to be used in the attack. Eaton was killed by suffocation. Detectives working on the theory her body was hidden in a cave after her death. The secluded cave, a former World War II bunker, only locals would know. 59-year-old Eaton was last seen playing piano at her hotel. Her family believed she'd gone for a run. Her passport, wallet, phone and cash left behind. Only her running shoes missing. Her husband and two children had flown to Crete to help identify Suzanne. In a statement this week, her son Max calling her a remarkable woman and a brilliant scientist. Tonight, police tell NBC News samples from under her fingernails will be DNA tested. It may be their best lead. That's that. All right, Keir Simmons, thanks. And coming up, how a traffic stop for speeding turned into an incredible life-saving moment. The scene in Eden, North Carolina, an explosion at a Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant captured on surveillance video. The blast was so powerful it was felt several miles away. Remarkably, there were no injuries. There's no word right now on cause. A potential speeding ticket turned into a race to save a baby's life in South Carolina. Our Kristen Dahlgren has more on a hero officer who sprung into action. What started as a traffic stop for speeding quickly turned into a dramatic rescue. What's your baby's name? Riley. Riley? The 12 day old girl was unresponsive. Her mom telling deputy William Kimbrough she stopped breathing after drinking a bottle. All of it caught on Kimbrough's body cam. I'm gonna put her on your lap. I'm gonna check for a pulse. Okay, I got a pulse. She's got a pulse. He never stops talking to the newborn as he calls for help and makes sure she is breathing. Come on, baby. 
finally, a cry. There you go. As long as she's crying like that, she's breathing. Eventually, paramedics arrive. Officials say tonight, the baby is doing well, thanks to a quick-thinking officer who was right there when she needed him. Kristen Dahlgren, NBC News. What an amazing drama. Thank goodness that officer was there. When we come back, an inspiring story of a mother's love baked into a very special dish. In tonight's Inspiring America, a follow-up to a story we told you about a few years ago about a mom who lost her five-year-old daughter and how she chose to honor and remember her has now gone far beyond her imagination. It started with mac and cheese.
This is a finished look, you guys. What do you think? Love it, love it, love it. This look is definitely a fave. It's my yellow and black sun kiss summer makeup look. Dynamite. Remember, you guys, that I'm going to bring you guys extra content. So I am bringing you get ready with me videos for tuesdays and thursdays and i'm going to open up saturdays also and and do streaming you guys and for those who don't have the time to really do like streaming for over an hour i am going to do short videos so you have the shorter version of the streaming so those are two options so my whole six seven my whole day pretty much will be maxed out six seven days I'm gonna be a busy little camper so you guys all for you please you guys don't forget to subscribe to my channel please press the subscribe button it doesn't cost anything subscribe please I am asking you to do that for me support my channel if you love my makeups and um, yes you guys I have so much in store for you guys please subscribe hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when a video is uploaded until next time thanks for joining me on beauty by sam's reminding you that god's beauty and sam's beauty are one of the same until next time stay safe and god bless bye And now it's time for Psalms Bible Code of the Day taken from Psalms 128 verses 1 and 2. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.